Hey guys, this is God of Politics. I'm going to be a brand new video, but before we get started with this video, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, follow me on Twitter and join the Discord. Those are both linked down in the description. But in today's video, I will be doing a very, very highly anticipated map and video in my uh, prediction series for the redistricting process that's going on this year. And that is the state of Texas. Now, Texas is the second largest state in the country. And it has arguably the highest stakes redistricting uh, of any state. We've got so many competitive seats. We've got so many seats that could change hands depending on trends, depending on shifts that we see in the next decade. And this is really going to be a very, very impactful map that we're going to see. And as you can see on my screen right now is the current congressional map. Um, and you can see here that there's a lot of light red districts. You know, there's a lot of districts that, uh, if we go back earlier in the decade, were more Republican. We can go back to the president 2016, and we can see that a lot of these districts become significantly safer, including these districts along the Rio Grande Valley. We all know what happened there. Uh, we can go, of course, to the governor 2014 numbers. They are even redder. We can go to senator 2014, which is even redder than that. Uh, and we can see that the gerrymander, you know, overall held up pretty well, especially given that Trump performed worse than many of these House incumbents. But some of these districts did fall, including the 7th district here, including the 32nd district, which is Colin All Red Seat. Of course, this map does take quite a while to load sometimes because it does have a lot of districts of course but the 32nd also did fall and i don't know if you want to count the 22nd as a district that fell because it is a district that biden won but beth van doyne uh did win this district uh she was the mayor of irvine running against a progressive who generally don't perform who progressive candidates generally don't perform as well in the suburbs um but yeah, so there's, you know, overall their maps held them pretty well. The 21st, the 10th, the 31st, the 22nd, the 3rd, the 6th, they all held up pretty well. But it's going to be an issue in the future. They're going to have to shore up these seats and how make them more Republican. And you don't have unlimited Republican votes uh, to shore these districts up. And that's what makes it very tough to do. And, you know, additionally, a lot of these districts, these districts that have trended a lot to the Democrats, do have way too many people in them, which makes it even harder to shore up these districts. Because we look at the 3rd District, for example, 123,000 too many people. 10th District, 128,000 too many people. Uh, we look at the 22nd District, 162,000 too many people. And then we look at some of these rural districts, districts like the 1st District, for example, has almost 100,000 too few people. We look at the 13th district as just over 100,000 too few people. So it makes it very, very difficult to do this map. And I've spent hours and hours trying to make a map like this, trying to make my prediction map a map that is an effective gerrymander. And it's very, very difficult. And if I was making a gerrymander on my own, it would be different to this because they're going to try and shore up all of their incumbents virtually. And they're gaining two new seats. And I think that they're going to try and get at least one of them for themselves. But here is the prediction map. You can see here it does look quite cursed, and it'll look even more cursed when I go into some of these metro areas. But we can start here with a big change, and that is the Rio Grande Valley. Now, there is technically a court ruling that says that these districts have to be between 70 and 80 percent Hispanic, but doing that is so difficult that I think that they're just going to ignore it, and it will stand in court. Um, I just cannot see them doing that. I do think it makes sense to make the 15th district more Republican. Um, you could argue that the 34th it would make sense to make it more Republican because the incumbent is retiring. But this district, the 15th here, is so Republican that it's not really going to matter. I think it does make sense to keep Henry, Henry Cuellar in his district due to the fact that he is a more moderate Democrat, though he could lose a primary anyway. The 23rd has been made a couple points redder, um, but... We can look at the metro area of Houston here first. I have shored up the second district. It is now R plus 13. Given the fact that Dan Crenshaw is a very good incumbent, he'll win by a very, very safe margin. I've added in one of the new districts over here because Harris County has gone from like 4 million to 4.8 million people. I don't really see any way that you can make the Harris County area without a new congressional district here. And so that's what I've done with the 37th district to... Um, of course, uh, you know, fill in that area. I have made the 14th district pretty much the same. I've made the 22nd district significantly safer. It is now R plus 10.4%. 
Uh, I've made the 10th district safer, which was actually one of the hardest to do. The incumbent no longer lives in his district, but I think he'd rather not live in his district and be able to win than um, live in his district and probably lose many you know, in a couple of years. Um, but it is R plus 12 here, so that's good enough. The 17th district, another suburban district here, is R plus 19, getting close to R plus 20, though. Our, uh, the 21st district with Chip Roy is R plus 15. He's also a strong incumbent. You know, he's very well known now, so he'll have a lot of fundraising, similar to Dan Crenshaw in a lot of ways, uh, and he'll be able to win very, very easily. The 31st district, which has been moved quite a lot. It used to be just, you know, the Williamson County area, a bit of Travis County, um, but I've really moved it out into these rural areas now. They're currently in the 25th district, but I've moved it up to R plus 14.2 percentage points now. I've moved the 6th district to be a bit more rural and take a bit less blue areas. It is now R plus 12. And then this is where the biggest change occurs, and that's the 25th district. I really don't see how you can shore up these Dallas areas without having another district that stretches in and takes some of these blue areas, and that is done with the 25th district here. It's still a very solidly Republican area. The incumbent no longer lives in the district, but I don't really think there's much that you can do to avoid that. I don't even think he lives in the district currently, so... You know, it doesn't really change much to begin with. Um, the 4th District, I have stretched slightly into the Dallas area. I think it made it slightly uh, easier to do with the 3rd District to make it safer here. I have shored up the 32nd District for Colin Allred here. You know, it's you know virtually impossible to get rid of his district and make uh, seats that Republicans are going to win in the long term here. But I have shored up his district I've made the 33rd and the 30th also safe Democratic districts. If you look at the partisan lean of these districts, you can see that it does pack them, uh, these blue precincts, pretty well into the district. The 24th, you know, luckily there's a lot of these very safe Republican areas right next to the safe Democratic areas over here. So that does make the 24th district uh, approximately R plus 10 or R plus 11 it is. The 26th district has become significantly less safe, but it's R plus 13, and the incumbent here is very, very strong, so he should be fine. The 3rd district uh, with the incumbent Van Taylor is R plus 10. He'll be fine as well. The 12th district is still very, very safe. Um, it's R plus 25. I didn't want to make it too close because right now it's like R plus 40 or something, and you don't want to make it too close. You don't want to make a candidate that's unpalatable to the suburbs You know, being put into a suburban district here. The 25th I've made take... A lot of these blue precincts over here, and I've also kept the 33rd as a majority Hispanic district. I've made the 30th. Uh, it is still plurality black as it is in the current map. The 32nd is uh, majority minority as it is in the current map. But overall, all of these seats here in the Dallas area shored up. The 5th district has also been, you know, uh, it's still safe Republican R plus 20 here. It's a bit close in the current map, but... You know, again, these areas are going to shift heavily towards the Democrats, but you have to remember that the House Republican incumbents did do better than Trump. If you want to use President or actually Senate 2020 uh, as a better indicator of what some of these suburban districts are going to look like, you can see that it does get uh, significantly more safe over here. Uh, and that's probably a better indication of what these suburban districts are going to look like in the future here, at least what they're going to look like in 2022. In the future, these districts could really be in danger, especially districts like the 24th and the 26th and the 3rd even. Uh, R plus 10 districts in the last decade would not be good, uh, you know, by now. Um, but maybe some of these House Republicans can hold on as long as the incumbents stay in their districts here. But overall, the map has 13 Democrats, 25 Republicans here. The Democrats lose the district in the 15th, but they gain a district in the Austin area. Republicans gain one district uh, over here in the 37th district, and they also gain the 5th district, 15th district, of course. And the current map, I believe it is 23 to 13. Uh, the new map is going to be 25 to 13. So they haven't given both of the new districts to Republicans, but they have made the 15th a more Republican district. So it effectively does the same thing here. All the Republican incumbents virtually live in their districts with the exception of, I believe, the 25th district incumbent and the 10th district incumbent. Um, but yeah, overall, I think this is a pretty effective map for the time being. I think most of the House incumbents will be okay. Apparently, the map's releasing tomorrow, which is why I was in such a big rush to make this video. Um, but we will see what happens here. I am very, very excited to see this map. Hopefully, it's not a gerrymander. I think you guys know that I'm very consistent on what I want with these maps. I don't want a gerrymander. 
Uh, and I apply that same logic with Texas as well. But I'm very excited to see what happens. So thank you for watching this video. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also follow me on Twitter and join the Discord. Those are both linked down in the description. But again, guys, thank you all for watching this video. And I will see you guys later.